Ten years ago tomorrow, the U.S. came together under horrific circumstances and proclaimed to stand united. We saw support for both wars in Afghanistan and Iraq at an all-time high. The global recession and the recent debt debacle, though, they've certainly taken their tolls on the public. But is the economy really the only thing to blame for why Americans now find themselves so bitterly divided. Here again, KT McFarland, Janine Borelli, and Judy Miller. Thanks for sticking around with us. So it is a drastic difference between 10 years ago and today in terms of the unity felt amongst Americans. And it's obvious, KT. Yeah, but I think actually there's nothing wrong with this. I think it's a very good thing when the majority of Americans are alive and awake and politicized. Because in the end of the day, that's what a democracy does, bring everybody in. I think that 10 years ago, 12 years ago, you only had a small percentage of the population that voted, that mm -hmm. cared. And you're seeing that change. So I think, in fact, while the results aren't terrific right now because there are so, so much division, in fact, the, the point is that so many more Americans are now have skin in the game or paying attention. Right. And, and educated, works out. And educated, educated and about themselves. how the process works. Yeah, no, so. I agree. But, you know, we're in a battle. We're in a battle of ideas and we're in a battle of big government versus limited government. And people were not paying attention mm -hmm. to what was going on in Washington. And this has been going on for many, many years. And now the cost of all these big government policies and the inefficiencies of these big government policies have caught up to us. So now the American people are watching and they're challenging their elected representatives and they want answers. And it's a grassroots and movement and absolutely. it's a bottom up, and it's well, not and a top You mentioned right. the cost right. of the yeah. inefficiencies. What would happen today, though, if an incident like 9-11 happened in terms of the economy and the situation that we're in? Do you think that it would be a resounding, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to pull together, no questions asked? Absolutely. Well, yes, okay. I do. And in fact, that's mm -hmm. the reason I think we can afford to have these big debates about economic issues, about the direction of the country on social and fiscal policy is that we have taken the big security issue off of the table to mm -hmm. a certain extent. People do feel safer. You saw that poll, Heather, that True. you put up. 56% of Americans think we're much safer today. If that weren't there, Americans would not have the luxury of having this debate that KT talked about. And Absolutely there's another look at that safer. poll. of 54% yeah. now say, mm -hmm. and compared to a year ago, 53%, um, but yet down slightly from 2004. Mm -hmm. But if there were another major event, I'm sure this country would pull together. Oh, within this seconds. country always pulls together yeah. when it really counts. But we would have to figure out a way to pay for it. That remains to be the question. And we had President Obama. Um, you know, there's a bitter mm -hmm. divide. The big difference is on Capitol Hill when it comes to getting our economy back on track. And this week we heard a strong speech from the president on his jobs plan. Is it enough to unite or will it just divide? So that leads us into this situation and the Jobs Act. KT, I'll start yeah. again with you. Your thoughts on, on his speech itself. Well, I think as a speech, he was finally gave a good speech. Um, he seemed to be animated by it, the, the technique of the speech. Um, I think the interesting thing is that the Republicans didn't sort of completely dismiss it, that there are things that they're going to find. My guess is that there will be some common ground. But I think, as Deneen says, this is absolutely a fundamental difference of opinion of what's the function of government. And was, was the president looking for common ground or did he make it clear from the very beginning that he was not willing to do so in, in that he continued to repeat what was it passed this bill? Right, right. It's, how many times did he say that? Uh, I, I lost, I lost it count. 16 times? It is more, it's more spending and yeah. there wasn't a plan. He was on summer vacation and showed up to school with no homework. <laughs> no plan. Now we got to wait another week or two for this so-called plan. The hard part. Have, it's, it's a, that is it's not paid stimulus. for. Yeah. Not paid for until the Many super committee figures out a way to pay for it. The best line I heard about this was the Obama speech was eat dessert first. Uh, well, because he's going to talk well, about how you pay for it later. I think at least he showed that he was alive and a lot of people had wondered <laughs> about that before. Where's our president? He Thank seems God. so laid back. Now he had passion. He had fire. Of course because he's entering campaign season <laughs> and this is what he does best. I think he did did move towards the Republicans in terms of tax cuts. For, you know, I think he's given them a lot of what they want. Now, the question is, are the Republicans going to give back? Are they going to pocket what he's given them and say, that's it, no more changes? Yeah, the $447 billion dollar right. Jobs right. Act. He knows the Republicans are not going to go for that. But, you know, I, I think what he can do now and immediately is reform regulations. That yeah. he can do. 
Uh, you know, EPA is killing our economy, killing jobs with the regulations that are coming out of the EPA. That is something he can do now and do that without Congress. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even Reagan, when I worked for Reagan, Reagan had three things he wanted to do. Fix defense, cut government regulations, cut the size of government, and lower taxes. And even Reagan, with both houses of Congress, didn't get all three. So I think that Obama may be going into a mode that even if he mm -hmm. is reelected, is contained within the White House, that he's not going to get what he wants. Well, he does like to reference uh, President Reagan. All the time. <laughs> so we'll see. And right now he needs 60 votes in the Senate, yeah. and it's gonna, it That's could get worse happen. as yeah, of next November. We'll see what happens. He's out on the road trying to sell it right now. Right. So, And Greg, I think